So warping is the way that open sections resist torsion and um, hollow sections primarily resist torsion in pure torsion. So there is a distinct difference in the behavior of open sections and hollow sections. So first of all, warping, this is warping. Um, this is a plan view, I suppose, of an open section, perhaps a universal beam. The diagram on the bottom is probably the one that we're most interested in. So let's imagine we've got a beam which is supported at the left hand and the right hand. We're looking down on plan. Uh, we're applying a torsion and one of the beams, sorry, one of the flanges is going to move in one direction and the other flange is going to move in the other direction. So that's why you've got those two arcs drawn in the bottom diagram there. Um, that obviously is going to lead to a twist, doesn't it? Because if you look at the centre line of this beam, mid-span of this beam, I should say, then one flange has gone in one direction, the other flange has gone in the other direction, and that means we've got a considerable twist. The other highlight on that bottom diagram is the end detail uh, because you can, I suppose, think about the analogy of that bent top flange or the bent bottom flange. Um, the degree of curvature is going to depend on the end fixity. Uh, if we don't have any fixity at all, well, of course, it's relative to freely bend. If we've got some fixity, uh, then it will curve rather less. And what we're interested in here is, in fact, the relationship between the two flanges. Uh, we would like to provide a detail, perhaps, that provides fixity between one flange with respect to the other. And if we do that, that would be known as a warping fixed connection. Warping fixed connections are not as straightforward as you might think. So here are a couple of details of, of different, different details which would achieve a warping fixed connection. And we don't see them because they are expensive. Uh, so generally, we're going to have a, a simple detail. And therefore, when we come to determine the resistance of the member, we would not assume warping fixed at the end, but we would assume warping free. And uh, from now on, that will be my assumption because these sorts of details with the, uh, on the left-hand side, the addi additional channel members welded in between the flanges, and on the right-hand side, the additional stiffeners and the, different, the additional plate across the toes of the incoming beam, very expensive and unlikely to be done. So most of the time, I would recommend that you uh, don't consider this sort of detailing, but rather when you verify the resistance of the member, you just assume warping three. Here then, first of all, is a simplified approach with an open section. We're still dealing with open sections at the moment. And that's to recognize that open sections manage or provide the resistance to warping, provide the resistance to torsion by warping. So one flange is going to go in one direction, uh, the other flange is going to go in the other direction. So we can see the beam on the left, we've got some torsion. We can convert the torsion into a force on each flange separated by a lever arm. So the torsion is T and the lever arm is just the overall section depth divided by minus the thickness of the flange. That will give us the lever arm between the center lines of the flanges. So, okay, let's imagine we've got this torsion applied at mid-span. We can calculate the force F applied to one particular flange, and then we can work out the bending moment in that flange. Dead straightforward, uh, just FL over four. So that's going to give us a bending moment in the flange. If we've got bending in the flange, then first of all, we're going to get some longitudinal stresses due to that bending. That's longitudinal as far as the beam is concerned, and they would be known as the warping stresses. If we've got um, bending stresses due to warping, then we must also have shear stresses due to warping. 
So when we come to verify an open section, we need to concern ourselves with those additional stressors.